many, Africa is a once-in-a-lifetime destination. For the adventurers, a self-drive safari lets you experience the true spirit of Africa with the freedom to explore and discover all of its wonders at your own pace. Botswana has some of the last great untouched wildernesses in southern Africa. The vast expanses of diverse terrain and thriving wildlife like no other on earth. A Botswana self-drive safari is undoubtedly the ultimate African adventure. It's got amazing camping. It's got incredible wildlife. And it's got amazing driving experiences. And this is the ultimate African adventure. So first day of our trip really. This is the Takata on a 4x4 track too. Looking forward to it. We haven't crossed the Limpopo into Botswana in more than a year, thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're keen to visit some old favorites as well as a few new spots as we take you with us on our adventure. This adventure would consist of 23 days, see us drive 3000 kilometers and visit nine different camps. The route is a mix between tar and gravel roads, thick sandy single sand tracks and lots of mud, as well as water crossings in the rainy season. Always keep travel times in mind, as a lot of it is slow going. Tracks for Africa usually provides the best indication of travel times. Botswana, Kama Rhino Sanctuary today, Umaha tomorrow, Maun the next day, into the Okavango Delta through Chobe National Park and then back down to Kugu Island the ultimate African adventure. Ed, what are the plans, bud? The plans are, we left Johannesburg at around half past four and we're on the way to Matamba Bush Camp to meet up with Chris, he pulled through there yesterday and then we're going to Martin's trip, the border post. How was the drive, my man? Did you enjoy that fog? Yeah, the mist was next level but it's just broken through, but the sun's just broken through the mist and the sunrise is absolutely amazing, hey? Man, Botswana, here we come. We've starved in Botswana for a year, but we're going back. Looking forward to it. Yeah, mate. Uh, just good to see the Echo 5 ready, and she's looking good with that eye camper on top, mate. But the Ranger and the Conqueror look like they're ready to go. And what better place to go? We're going to Moremi. Just can't wait to cross that Limpopo River, mate. It's going to be one of those trips, I reckon. Yep. Only good things from you, eh? How are you doing, Boot? Good, thank you, and yourself? Yeah, can't complain. How are you doing, Chris? You are, man. That was your yeah. first night out. Yes, sir. Like, are you doing chalets from now chalets on? Chalets is the way to go. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. <laughs>
we've just gone through Martin's Drift. We're here at Guano King. Just filled up with fuel, grab something to drink. There, and now we're on our way to Carmarana Sanctuary. Can't wait. We should be there just after one. So great timing. Can't wait to see those rhino out there. got to be one of the easiest water crossings actually been through here at Martin's Drift. They read the COVID test, we paid for the vehicles, stamped the passports. Guano King stopped for, on a bit of fuel, a bit of supplies from the shops. Around two hours to Karma Rhino Sanctuary. Looking forward to getting the tent set up, having a couple of cold ones, heading down to Malemo Pan. Let's go. Our first stop is at Kama Rhino Sanctuary, a two and a half hour drive from the border. Kama is a popular stopover to and from the central and northern Botswana. Aside from a few potholes on the first stretch of road from the border, it's an easy drive to Kama. We are at Kama Rhino Sanctuary, so it's usually our first stopover, which means we're officially in Botswana. Wow, we're here, we're here, we're here, we made it, we're in Botswana. Absolutely magic. We're only staying at Karma for one evening, so we'll show you around a bit more on our way back. Karma is a community managed wildlife sanctuary. It's the best place to see rhinos in Botswana. Hit the track to Malema Pan, a favorite spot of ours as the sun begins to set. Kama Rhino Sanctuary has significantly contributed to the survival of rhinos in the southern Africa, helping to increase populations and protect both black and white rhinos, along with over 30 other wildlife species. You see that there, dude? That's a perfect photo if you've ever seen one. We're here at uh, Malema Pan. It's always an amazing spot to come down to and have a look at, especially when it's sunset. It's fantastic. We've got three rhino pulling in now. And um, yeah, we're just out of our vehicles. Uh, again, we still don't know if we should be out of our vehicles. And we're sticking close to our vehicles and enjoying the sunset, magic moments. Always great to be in Botswana. And, yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah. So we're out here at the Malema Pan here at Kamarana Sanctuary. Tomorrow we head to Kumaka campsite on the edge of Maharikari Pans National Park. Now, the last time we were there, we didn't have a fantastic experience. We have livestock running through camp. Everything was horridly overgrazed. But tomorrow we go back there. The Boteti is in flood. Can't wait to go back to Kumaka tomorrow. Right now we're going to head back to camp, have a couple of cold ones, put some meat on the braai, and have a fantastic night here at Kama Rana Sanctuary. How did you sleep? I slept okay, but I've got a headache this morning. Chris, where are we going 
today? Kumaha. How far is the drive? Um, it's about four and a half hours drive, so not too bad. I am actually quite looking forward to see what it looks like with the Boteti in flood. Hopefully there's no livestock. Right, so we've woken up here at a very cold and windy Carmarino Sanctuary. Fantastic night's sleep, all packed up. And now we're going to head to the Boteti River to Kumaha, stop in Letlakani for some fuel. And I cannot wait to see the Boteti River in flood. Just had a shower at Karma. Um, just filled up the water tanks in the trailer, and we are now heading towards the Karma Rhino Sanctuary Gate, where we'll get some wood for tonight's fire. It's a bit of an overcast day today, and we we're excited to to carry on the adventure. It's a four hour drive from Kamarana Sanctuary to our next stop, Tomaha Camp in the Mahadikari National Park. Letlakhani is a town that has developed as a result of mining. I believe they do diamond mining here from Letlakhani all the way to Arapa. There's a little Nando's. That's at the end of the town that we love to just pop in and grab a burger and uh, keep us going. Just filling up here in Letlakhani and whilst we go to amazing remote destinations on trips like these, we do love a bit of luxury, so check at this. How was the drive, Chris? Yeah, it's, uh, it was okay. The roads are actually not bad. Eh? Where are we now? We're at Let Lakani, uh, stopping for a quick Nando's burger. You're keen for a burger? Yeah, I'm keen. We're going to take a little bit of luxury into our own hands here at Let Lakani. We're going to have a Nando's burger on the way to Mach. I'm starving. So we're at the Nando's here in Letlakani. We stopped here on the way to CKGR last year, Central Kalahari, and we had an amazing burger. So we're getting another one. It's about 161 kilometers apparently uh, according to tracks for Africa and we should be there at about half past three. You excited Chris? Yeah I'm quite excited. Uh, like I said uh, the last time the campsite for me was a little so-so with all the livestock uh, in camp. Now with the river in flow uh, I'm hoping that stays is on the other side of the river. So hopefully we've got to camp to ourselves. And how does the Borkeke change uh, during the different seasons? I mean, it's obviously a big contrast between the dry months and the wet months like we are here now. Yeah, so the Puteti River actually flows off of the Maan River. I forget the name of that river. But in the past, the Puteti River actually used to be a river that never dried up. So uh, it changes now. Um, some years it can be a totally dry river and other years obviously with good rains it can it can be a very uh, full river yeah i think that river in mine you're talking about the tamalakane river 
Yeah, that's it. That's the one. The Tamakala, Tamalakala River. <laughs> oh man, just say that again. Just say that word again. Tamalakani River. <laughs> my man, you sound like a professional Motswana. 100%, 100 I'm experienced in these areas of Botswana. <laughs> well, man, speaking of the Botswanas, how friendly have people been, eh? Yeah, it's been very nice. Eh? It's, it's refreshing. Obviously, we've got 20 people in South Africa, but Botswana always takes everything to a different level. As we approach the Boteti River, it's soon apparent that we won't be driving through it. The Kumaha Gate is just the other side of the Boteti, and then the campsite's also not too far away. So look how beautiful it looks with all the water lilies though. <laughs> Yeah, so it's 150 pull up a vehicle to uh, use the ferry and uh, obviously we're going to do it twice because we have to come back tomorrow so that's 300 pull up each ferry, also known as a pont in southern Africa, is operated by a nearby lodge and is pulled across the river by hand using a strap. The ferry can carry one vehicle and trailer at a time. On the other side of the ferry is the Kumaha entrance to the Mkharikhari National Park. As we're only staying here for one evening, we're keen to head out for a late afternoon game drive along the Boteti. The predominant feature of this particular portion of the park is the Boteti River and the wildlife that surrounds it. We're only staying here for one evening, which in retrospect we would recommend at least a two night stay. Have a look at that scene absolutely amazing we're here at hippo pools enjoying the sunset we've had some amazing sightings here before unfortunately we haven't had a lot of time today to drive around but we just had some of the most amazing scenes in africa unfold in front of us we're going to enjoy this and then head back to camp
here at Hippo Pools and there's a lion roaring right up on top of the hill there. Hopefully they come down to drink. Chris, how far you reckon that lion is away? Oh, I think he's just over the ridge. So, I don't know, 500 meters? Kilometer? What's on the menu tonight? My man. Tonight we're doing a bright pack and we have some steak. We have some lacquer lamb chops and we have some force. Maybe thrown in with a couple of mullies, one or two. And that's it, eh? Nothing special. Simple. Simple, 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 elegant. and elegant. But my torch is not bright enough. So I'm maximizing. The next morning, we're at the ferry again, on our way to the Moremi. On our way to Southgate, we would stop in the bustling town of Maun, the gateway to the Okavango Delta. Here we would be filling up all of our tanks with fuel and water, as well as picking up our meat and fresh supplies. We would recommend that you pre-order your meat and have it vacuum packed before heading into Moremi and Chobi. Maha campsite uh, just looks magic, eh? But yeah, an absolutely great trip thus far. Day two in it. Now we're on day three, heading to Maun, where we stop off at Delta Meat Deli and pick up meat. Riley's to stock up on fuel, fill up all the jerry cans above, and then onwards to the wildlife department, where we've got to obviously pay for park fees, vehicle entry fees, and can't wait to get to Southgate Camp, McQuee Campsite. Okay, you wanna grab here, my man? We're on our way to Southgate, but there's a bit of a snag. The drive to Southgate is mostly gravel and takes around two hours. We're in the wild. Two Ellie's. I don't know if you can see it. Magic. Absolutely magic. If 
you want to test your gear and make sure it's reliable up in Africa, just come to the Moremi. It's next level. Where are we, my man? We are almost in Moremi. The most amazing place. We're in the Moremi. We're almost in the Moremi, but basically in the Moremi. Now the road's hectic. Eh? The hard tire pressures don't, yes, don't help. Brutal. Tomorrow we can let down. We're in a bit of a rush. That's why we haven't let down tire pressures yet. But let's get to Southgate. You know what, uh, the situation is tomorrow we have to go back to Mound because yesterday was workers day which was Sunday, today is Monday so that extended over to Monday which means we couldn't pay park fees so now we gotta go back to Mound tomorrow and the condition of the road, I don't know if you've seen it but yeah, that's a two and two and a half hour drive Chris, what are the solutions to this? Draw enough cash to pay for your park fees? Yeah, it's either a case of draw enough cash to pay for your park fees or you have to keep the public holidays into account as well, which... But we did, but then they extended it. They extended it obviously to the Mondays, so yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, Chris. Cheers, Chris. Snag aside, we still have a great first evening at Southgate.
Next morning sees us driving back to Mound to pay the park fees and to get some wood. screams oh. then the big one is a problem we highly recommend buying wood from local vendors on the side of the road the woods great and you're supporting the local community We are traveling shotgun in old Ed's Land Cruiser LC200 and uh, I'm just waiting for my peanuts and coke because as I said to Ed it feels like we're in an aeroplane here. I think I've got a Fanta grape. He, he's got a Fanta grape. In, he's got a Fanta grape. I'll settle on a Fanta grape and Chris has been feeding me bananas. So uh, he's in the front, I'm in the back and we, 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 we're just enjoying it. Eh? Looking forward to getting back to the Maremi. Southgate campsite McQueen number five. Hopefully the campsite is all in order as we left it this morning. And it's taken us about what four hours? We spent like an hour and a half, maybe two hours in Mount. Um, because all the ATMs were full of people, so we had to wait long to draw cash. Tell us who did we meet at the wildlife department? We met Peko, who's the same guy as from Naipan, he was working at the Naipan Pudu Hudu Gate to enter Makari Kari Pans National Park. Well, we were there last so year, January, on our trip, and he recognized us and we recognized him. So it was awesome to see him. And yeah, the people in Botswana are very friendly. Eh? It's been an overall pleasant experience. I uh, had uh, a very, very pleasant incident yesterday when a petrol attendant made a mistake um, and overcharged me with 600 Pula which I didn't realize and he proceeded to catch a taxi to find us and to tell me that they've overcharged me and must come back to get changed so that's just amazing that you still find that in today's day and age Although Southgate is usually used only as a stopover for most it is still a beautiful area with great bird life. Just a note that the ablutions at Southgate could use some work and there is a generator at the staff village next to the campsite. So what a day it's been. Uh, the adventure has truly begun. We spent today just relaxing around campsite. We're sitting up now. We've just made the fire. We're listening to the calls of the wild in the Maremi Game Reserve. It does get much better than this. And to be honest, I can now feel that the trip is beginning to become less rushed and more about enjoyment. very early in the morning and 
we had hyenas calling the whole night and seriously seriously close by they were very very close and the bush chorus here at south camp is amazing it's a bit marred by the generator they're running at the village there Yeah, it's been awesome and we've only been here effectively for one afternoon because other times we've been driving to Mound but today we get into the Moremi proper and I don't know where my spoon is let's see if Ryan ah Ryan's jacked the spoon as well unused and abused this guy gotta watch for everything around the campsite Yes, the hyenas except it. What? I mean, I haven't heard that about, I don't know, man, two o'clock. No, it was half past four. They were going off proper. There was two of them, eh? Mm. Yeah, that, that I heard. Them, but... Yeah, that was half past four. Somewhere in this echo, I've got grass. Somewhere. There we go. Mm. These squirrels in this campsite are next <laughs> level. You leave one door opening, they're on your dash. They're eating the rusks inside your car. They're trying to get the dried mango out of the packet. I left the back of the trailer open, they try to get my potatoes. Ryan, one's in your canopy right now. Ryan, there's a squirrel in your canopy, Chomp. Huh? There's a squirrel in your canopy, bro. Seriously? Yeah. There's all three of us is at the coffee shop, eh? Seattle. Yeah, Seattle, Seattle, Seattle coffee, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle coffee. You got a hair in your coffee, bro. Hey, yeah. yeah. it's a spider's whip, bro. Is it? Yeah, well, where, where did the hair come from, my man? My hair is not that. I don't have yeah. hair, my man. What day is it? Six. six. Five. Four months. Five. five. We've had four days. This is day five. <coughs> Jeez, look. You're having a seizure. What are the plans? Um, we drive to Kwai, Northgate, which is what, about 38 kilometers from here? Chris, have you been? I haven't been to either Kwai or Savuti, so I'm actually looking forward to that quite a bit, obviously. Um, been to Southgate. And you've been, you've been to Kwai campsite before. Yeah. What, what, tell us, what are we in for? I've been there about three times and um, different times of year obviously but it's my favorite place i promise you the campsite is wild proper proper wild so you can expect a game coming through bird life similar to this what i like about the northgate um, campsite unfortunately you do have to pay the park fees because you're staying inside the park yeah but they've got good ablutions oh, well certainly the last time i was there was good ablutions they come and clean they come and take the ashes away you know it's one of those iconic moments crossing the north gate that bridge yeah. across the choir yeah. river i mean you see so many overlanders around the world that have come here to do that so yeah today absolutely. we're doing it yeah absolutely cool. so the only people camping at southgate yeah absolutely eh? which has been magic I yeah mean, no, it's been awesome we've enjoyed it here we're taking the scenic route through the reserve a two-hour drive we've heard numerous reports of deep water in the moremi so we're not sure what to expect
on our way now to Kwai Northgate and it's a 38 kilometer drive uh, Tracks for Africa is saying it will take us an hour to get there and we are driving through these really massive Mopani forests and they're beautiful very very lovely to be driving as the sun rises We arrive at Kwai with no water obstacles along the way, only great scenery and wildlife. We're pleasantly surprised with quiet campsites and some friendly locals to greet us. These are some amazing unfenced campsites. They are truly wild. Absolutely fantastic. We've been here 10 minutes. We're just trying to choose a campsite to make sure we've got enough space. We parked up alongside the ablutions and lo and behold, two massive bull elephants walked, if I say three meters from the trailers and the cars, well, that's just what happened right now. And they're standing here underneath these massive acacia trees, just grazing, so peaceful, so placid. This is this is fantastic. This is this is the adventure. This is brilliant. I don't know where that crazy one was coming from. The roads are fairly well interconnected. Uh, you just got to be careful for elephants as they use those as corridors. Pretty nice campsite. Um, every site, as I mentioned, has a braai, a barbecue, and a fire pit, bin, and water, which is quite convenient. The ablutions are really great. Um, we've had some so-so ablutions, but uh, props to SKL. These are in really good condition. Hot water is provided by solar water boilers. Um, what you've got to remember with those is you only get water up, hot water up to the evening. In the morning it's going to be cold. You'll notice there's some barbed wire to stop the elephants from tampering with it as well. It's a very pleasant drive. We uh, drove from Southgate Mukwe to Kwai Camp. Um, quite a leisurely drive. Uh, we are at campsite number one. Uh, the campsites are really nice, they I think quite uh, dispersed. The ablutions compared to what we've seen thus far is spectacular. Uh, we've had lots of elephants. Um, I've been told by uh, some people here that there are lots of lions and hyenas as well, so looking forward to that. It was a lot of shuffling to get everything sorted. We had elephants stopping us from getting into certain campsites, so this place is always delivered continues to deliver and now we're going to head out for a game drive along the Kwai River. It does not get any better than this. We head out for our first afternoon game drive. We soon find that a number of roads are impossible due to the high water levels. We're forced to stick to the main track.
It's not long before we're rewarded with our first game sighting though. Three lionesses taking it easy in the late afternoon light. In the next episode, join us as we head into the Savuti, drive the long road to Chobi and take the long road down to Kubu Island. Bush is alive, absolutely alive and just really happy to be here mate. overlanding escape we'll see you in Chobi. a big thank you to our product sponsors for this trip flexo power south africa lacy tackler products wild dog 4x4 and tracks for africa